Happy Tuesday, everybody, and it's time for Food for the Journey. I'm joined by Deacon Becky. My name is Father Justin. I'm the rector here at Christ Church. And Deacon Becky is our deacon, and who gave an exceptional sermon on Sunday. With very few notes. With very few <laughs> notes, which is our kind of running joke. I keep telling her that just preach without the notes, which is a very daunting task. Well, today we're jumping in on Zephaniah which is our Old Testament lesson for Sunday. Zephaniah is another one of the prophets. Uh, as we hear in Advent, we, have, we hear from numerous prophets because it's Advent and there's this pointing towards the coming Messiah and there's this idea of preparation. And Zephaniah, this particular portion of Zephaniah, which is chapter 3, 14 through 20, this is God speaking through Zephaniah to the Israelites still in exile. And, oh, and actually not still in exile, on the verge of going to exile, because, as you will catch in the text, those who have all the power and those who have the authority are misusing what they have, and there's this idea that God is going to punish them. But at the same time, there's this other group of people who God is going to favor. And that's the tension, I think, of Advent, really, and what Zephaniah shows us is how do we respond with what we have back to what God's calling us to do. And with especially with Zephaniah, he takes a little bit of a turn different than what we've seen with the other apocalyptic um, prophets that we've listened to because there is actually much said about the king of Israel, the Lord is in your midst, and I will save the lame, I'll gather the outcast. So it's it's got a resounding message of hope, that hope that we're still um, putting our um, feet on for Advent and that expectation. Yes, and you just touched on something that's really important here in Advent 3. It's almost foreshadowing Advent 4, which is God is with us. Lord is in our midst. There's an incarnational theme starting to take hold in Advent as we move ever so closer to Christmas, to the incarnation uh, of God uh, with us. But also, just like a good Advent text, it lives in that tension of Jesus coming as a man, walking the earth, and then Jesus coming again at the second coming. But nonetheless, God is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. That is what this text is pointing to, even for these folks that are on the verge of something very unpleasant. Um, but not for everybody. Not for everybody. Because there's a group, and you and I were talking about it in this text, that are going to get a much different experience of God's judgment, if you will. Yes, because he's looking with favor on the lame and the outcasts, those who are in poverty, and those who have um, been shamed, um, that have been oppressed. So there is that, that uh, vision that God does pay attention to those that we sometimes want to overlook. Dare we say that's the biblical message? Yes, it is. I mean, I think if we looked at the Gospels, if you look at the biblical narrative, God always seems to show pity, favor, support those who are uh, on the outside, mm -hmm. those who are outcasts, those who the world's deemed not good not for good whatever enough. reason. And then God seems to, to hold, at least in the Old Testament, that's where we have to kind of be careful. The Old Testament, God's somewhat um, is living into the arrangement that God has with God's people. And that's some of what Zephaniah is talking about. Look, folks, I gave you what you have. Now you leaders are doing this. You are in charge of these people, and this is how you're oppressing them. This is, how you're, this is not what I asked you to do. And a long time ago, we made a promise to one another that if you uphold your end and worship me and do what I ask you to do, then I will continue to bless you and support you. And if you don't do that, then I'm going to be forced to do this. But even in those cases, just like we heard last week and now in Zephaniah, God still doesn't give up on God's people, but God does follow through almost like a parent to a child who's misbehaving. You'll hear the parent discipline the child, but not leave the child. And we all probably can remember as kids, our parents punishing us and then our parents quickly coming back so at some point right after the punishment and saying, I did this because I love you and I expect better and you can do better. Remember what we talked about. I don't know about you. Oh, I yes. have plenty of instances of yes. that in my life. Yes, I remember sitting in the corner 
but then having the shoulder come and pull me. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, we all do that. And that's kind of where we stand in Zephaniah. And I just want to encourage y'all to come on Sunday as we kind of unpack. I'll be preaching this coming Sunday on Advent 3. And we'll be looking a little bit of the connection between our reading in Zephaniah. And tomorrow we're going to come back to you and talk about our gospel lesson. And I think there's some correlation here. But in the meantime, imagine, if you will, and look at what you do with God, what God blesses you. How do we, how do you, how do I, how do we... As a church, respond to those who are outcasts. Do we, do we, do we back off and, and think it's overwhelming, or do we respond? And that's that's the uncomfortable tension in this text because we can see very clearly where God stands and where God's justice stands in terms of people and uh, and where they are in life. And I think we have to wrestle with that and wrestle with how we respond. That's so. True. Come on Sunday, and we'll look forward to seeing you there. That's right. Hope is not trivial.